We already have another agent, Jose, so I appreciate you calling, but I got to go. I'm not sure if you're open to this, Aaron. Most sellers typically take the time to interview a couple of different agents just to get a couple different opinions about price, make sure they get top dollar commission, getting the best commission structure, and also marketing uh, to make sure that they're getting the most proactive and aggressive marketing plan. Is that something that you're open to at all? You know, I guess I'm open to it, but like, you know, I kind of feel bad because, uh, you know, he's like a friend from church sort of thing. So we already told him that we were probably going to go with him. Got it. So obviously there's a little bit of like, hey, I've already kind of told them uh, that I want to work with him. So there's a little bit of like, you would almost feel bad if you even went with another agent. That's right. Got it. So the only reason I was asking Aaron about getting a second opinion is a lot of the properties that we actually list, we sell them substantially above the asking price. Let me give you a quick example. Like we just listed a property at 750,000 and we were able to get $825,000 for that property. That's $75,000 above the asking price. Last year, my highest negotiation above the asking price was 220,000. The year before that, it was 290,000. Obviously, I can't promise you $290,000 above the asking price. But let me ask you this. If I can help you maybe make an extra 10000 extra 15000 $20,000 above the asking price, is that something that you'd be open to? Well, yeah. I mean, I guess so. Great. So what would be a good day for us to get together? That way we can go over the home selling process and specifically what we can do to help you get top dollar for the property. I don't know. I mean, I gotta, I gotta, I'd have to talk to my wife first before, you know, we scheduled something because like I said, we already kind of made a non-contractual agreement, you know? Got it. And I obviously, once again, I'm completely respectful of that. And obviously I would want you to talk to your wife as well too. Let me ask you this. Like if we were to get together, uh, is there typically a day of the week that would normally work out better for you? Yeah, she's off on Thursdays. Okay. And if we were to get together on a Thursday, would three o'clock or five o'clock be better for you? I guess five. Okay. So here's what I'm going to propose. Let's put it down tentatively for a Thursday at five o'clock. Obviously, it'll give you enough time to talk it over uh, with your wife. And then I'll call you Monday to confirm and make sure that that still works out for you guys. I guess that's okay. But what do you can't you just tell me like what you're going to do differently? Can't you just tell me over the phone? Yeah. So uh, obviously, uh, I can tell you what I'm going to do differently. Here, here's what I would say to you: When we meet, I'm going to share with you the exact plan, Aaron, that I've used to sell eighty million dollars worth of real estate in the last twelve months. Um, it includes everything from a two. $0.6 million property all the way down to $500,000 property. So as it relates to what I'm going to do to help you sell it, I've got zero doubt in my mind whatsoever that we can obviously help you sell the, the property. There you go. So what I'm aware of, guys, is that if you're an active prospector, you're going to hear this frequently. I'd say probably 20% of the time when you're making calls that they're like, hey, I already have an agent. So having a response to that that is, you can deliver clearly and concisely and is logical and speaks to the human condition. Because if you notice what Jose did is he was talking about getting more money, right? Um, and he handled that very well. Uh, I would handle it very similarly, just like maybe with a little bit of a uh, novello flair on it. But the way I would handle the hat is I would say, yeah, that's fine. You know, my job is to help you. It's never to talk you into doing anything. And I oftentimes find that if somebody is going to sell their property, it's a business decision. It's really about who can help you net the most and do it quickly and efficiently. And as such, it usually makes sense to get more than one opinion with regards to price, marketing, and commission. I'm curious, do you think that would be helpful or useful in this instance? And then be quiet. Yeah, the, the, the thing is, Aaron, like I got a friend that I've verbally told them that I'm going to be working with them. Obviously, I haven't signed anything. But the thing is that like they're my friends from church and I, I, I'm a man of my word, you know. So whenever I say I'm going to do something, I typically do it, you know. Yeah. No, and I'm to totally respectful of that, you know, and I really appreciate your authenticity and your willingness to share uh, where you're coming from. And can I pay you a compliment? 
Yeah, of course. Yeah, you know, it's really rare in our society, you know, for people to kind of be loyal sort of thing. So um, I am definitely respectful of that. And I, I want to be clear that, you know, what I'm aware of is you don't owe me anything. That's for sure. I'm just a voice over the phone. And you don't really owe this individual anything. What this is really about is that you owe it to your family to make sure that you're doing your due diligence to get the best agent for the job that's going to help you maximize value and get the most possible. And, and being that it's a business decision, it usually makes sense to get more than one opinion with regards to, again, as I mentioned, price, strategy, and commission. I guess I'm curious, you know, in terms of what you want, because that's what's most important. Let's say we were able to help you get an offer that was very acceptable in the next 30 to 45 days. Would that work for you and your family or would that create a problem in some way? No, I mean, it wouldn't create a problem in any way, shape or form. But what I would say to you is because obviously I'm pretty loyal to this person is, I mean, you guys could always just bring us a buyer, you know, like, um, and obviously, I mean, I think he's going to offer like two and a half percent out to other agents as well, too. So, I mean, if you guys have somebody like we're still open to working, I mean, if you want to come by and take a look at the property, you can as well, too. Just, I mean, in case you have somebody, you know? Yeah. And listen, I'm very appreciative of that opportunity, uh, you know, to perhaps work with you in that capacity. And again, I'm here to serve and help you in whatever way, you know, works for both of us. And I'm curious because I know that the skill of listing a property is a little bit different than the skill of procuring a buyer. I guess prior to getting into a multi-month contract, which in this instance for a home like yours, somewhere between 800 to a, a million dollars, that could be six months. Do you think it would make sense to just really do some homework to ensure that you're getting, you know, the best service that you deserve and you can maximize value? Yeah. Um, obviously, but I'll be very transparent, Aaron. I think my home is just going to sell itself. Like mm. obviously like, uh, it's in a beautiful neighborhood. It's fully remodeled. Um, it's got the pool. It's got all the bells and whistles. I mean, I probably have invested about 300,000 into the property. So, I honestly don't think that it'll be a problem selling the property whatsoever. I genuinely believe that because it is so nice, it'll sell quickly and it's just going to kind of sell itself, you know? So I don't really know if talking to somebody else would make any difference at all. Yeah, no. And again, I appreciate your authenticity and your willingness to share that. And that's operating under the assumption that all agents do the same thing, right? And I'm in agreement with you that the home is lovely. So it's not a question of, to me, if you could procure a offer at the same time, what if you knew that there was a way that you could procure more than a offer and perhaps get multiple offers and sell for meaningfully more than what it's actually on the market for? You know, in fact, we just did a negotiation for a property just like yours in a geographic area. And because of the, you know, kind of approach that we use and the techniques that we deploy in the marketplace, we actually got $55,000 above the asking price. Now I have to imagine if you knew that there was a way that you could do that, it would certainly be worth maybe 15 minutes of your time to explore, wouldn't it? Of of course it would. The only thing is that like my friend kind of said something similar. My friend kind of said like that he would get me multiple offers. And he said that like everything's selling above the asking price right now, you know? So he yeah. kind of said like, oh, I would I would do something similar. Uh, as well, too, you know? Yeah. And, you know, it brings up another point, right? Because I, I could certainly see how that would be the case. And at the same time, have you ever heard that saying in our culture that you got to be cautious about doing business with friends and family? I have. Yeah. Yeah. Why do you think that exists? Why do you think people say that? Um, I don't know, because if something doesn't go right, then obviously like it puts you kind of in an awkward position, but I think if I don't list with them, it also puts me in an awkward position as well too. So it's almost like if I don't list with them, I'm in an awkward position. And if I do yeah. list with them and it works out, I could be in a good position, but if it doesn't work out, I'm still in an awkward position. You know, yeah, I understand. I understand completely the predicament. What if there was a win-win situation where not only you get the service and results that you deserve based on merit and who you feel can do the best job for you, the other agent or your friend can participate in the sale in some capacity. I mean, is, is that something you would, you'd be open to? W what do you have in mind? What do you mean by that? Yeah. So we've helped a lot of families uh, under the same set of circumstances because truthfully, everybody has a real estate license, right? And, you know, I can understand the relational kind of obligation to perhaps go with someone. 
At the same time, I mean, this is one of the largest assets that people own, if not the largest. And it would certainly make sense to do some due diligence uh, prior to entering into that multi-month contract. So what we've done is if, and I'm clear that that is an if, let's say we connect, it all makes sense. We review track records and real estate report cards and you make the decision like, you know what? I think Aaron and his team would actually serve us best. What I could do is, is I could reach out to that other agent and we would pay them a referral fee on the listing side commission, which again, we would come to a meeting of the minds. And that way your friends participating in the transaction, you get the service and results that you deserve and you can preserve that relationship. Does that make sense to you? It does. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, just by you saying that demonstrates that we should at least get together and discuss the options. So I'm looking here at my schedule. If we were to connect under normal conditions, would you and your wife, would you guys be available in the evenings or the afternoons? Well, I, I want to kind of talk it over with her before I commit to anything, just to be fully transparent. I don't want to like set up a time now. I, I'd like to talk it over with my wife first. Yeah, I understand. I mean, I'm married, so I get it. Right. And I guess I'm curious because I can hear in your voice that you're emphatic that you're going to sell this home. I'm wondering, how does your wife feel about the sale and the ultimate move? Equal. She's obviously equally as emphatic or even more than I am. Awesome. So if she knew that there was someone who could shed some light on the situation, provide you with some guidance that could help you to accomplish your goals and objectives and do it quickly and efficiently, I'd have to imagine, I mean, she'd want to speak to them, wouldn't she? Well, yeah, but he, here's the issue. It's actually like both of our friends and she's really good friends with the wife. That's like a challenge. Mm. So I don't know, to be quite honest, how she's going to feel if I tell her like, hey, look, I'm, I've got this guy who sounds obviously really good on the phone. I don't know him personally, but she may be like, look, like I'm friends with the wife. Like I just had wine with the wife the other night, you know, like so it's kind of like it kind of puts us a little bit of an awkward position just to be fully transparent. Yeah. And uh, first of all, I appreciate your kind words. It sounds like you're beginning to see why people like you hire me all the time for the job. And uh, my intention is certainly not to you know, create any familial harmony for you. How about we do this? Like if we were to connect, and I'm aware that that isn't if you want to speak to her first, under normal conditions, would you guys be available in the evenings or the afternoons? Uh, afternoons for sure. Okay. And afternoons for you guys, is that at like, I don't know, like three or a little bit later at five? No, three is okay. good. So what I can do is I can grab a pencil with a very big eraser, Jose. I could block something out for, let's say, tomorrow at three. You'll have the opportunity, obviously, to speak to your wife. And we'll call you to confirm it. If we need to change it or move it around or anything of that nature, we can always do that. Does that sound okay? It does, yeah. All right. So what I'll do is I'll block it out for that time. And then I'm going to do a bunch of homework. Myself, team, and staff, we're going to send you some information uh, via email for you guys to review. We'll call you to confirm. And again, if we need to change it or move it, we can do that. So before we connect, I just have a couple of super quick questions to ask you just to make sure that I'm fully prepared and I can provide you with the most accurate information and be the best assistance to you guys. And I'll be brief because I know your time is valuable. And then there I'd go into prequel. So you'll notice if you're listening, me and Jose do this very similarly, right? Um, where we're really trying to look for what is the opening. It's kind of like you're, you, you want to get let in the door. And this is a difficult one, particularly if there's like a really strong relationship. So in other words, like, I don't care how good you are as a salesperson. My sister's always going to list her property with me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like there's, right? But oftentimes, more often than not, that's not the case. It's just somebody that they know or maybe a friend or some, and they really don't do any due diligence. It's just based on the familial or kind of the relationship, right? And not based on kind of a business decision. So what we're doing, me and Jose, is just asking questions to try to see where's the opening. So you'll notice when I was saying like, hey, what if we could get you more money? You're like, yeah, my friend said we could. So that's when I pivoted to, well, what if we could come up with a win-win situation where this other ind individual would participate and you get, you know, the service that you deserve. And he's like, well, what would that look like? And then we went down that path. Right. So I, I noticed you taking some notes, Jose, what did you come up with? Well, I, I was agreeing with that. Like, it, it's almost like you're looking for the opening. And if that door closes, most agents don't have enough ammo to go into a different door. They get Correct. stuck. 
But the challenge is that you have to have different ways of handling it. That way you have enough different ammo or enough. So even with this objection, what I realize is my the way that I handle it, and you actually gave me the appointment on the second layer, but there's three to four different layers to that objection handle. Like if you keep saying no, I already know exactly what I'm going to say in the next one. Most people only have one way. So like if they say, well, or even what I noticed with this objection, most people will go into, well, how long have you known your friend? Or like, like, yeah, they uh, try to or, like shit on the, they try to shit on the friend, which that's a horrible thing to try to shit on another agent. And it almost never works. Agreed. And if you do that, it's almost like an instant rejection, but like you're kind of setting yourself up for it. Be like, well, how long has your friend been in the business? What do you think they're going to say, guys? They're going to be like, well, yeah. my friend's been in the business for like 30 plus years. He's got a, uh, like, Hey, what if there was a way where you can work with somebody else? Well, my friend's already a top producer. They're going to defend their friend. So if you start going down some of those angles, it's going to be very difficult. And it's almost like you're going to be reacting to everything that they're telling you versus you leading the, the conversation. So here's the question that I have for you guys. How many times on a weekly, monthly, yearly basis are you getting this objection? Are you getting this objection five times in a year? where you don't know how to handle it? Are you getting it 20 times in a year where you don't know how to handle it? Or are you getting it 100 times in a year where you don't know how to handle it? Imagine if you're getting it, let's just say 20 times, let's say 30 times in a year. And let's say that you handle it 33% of the time, you handle it, or 100% of the time you handle it the same way, but it only works 33% of the time. That's 10 extra deals a year, multiply that by your average commission. Let's say it's 20 grand. That's $200,000 that you can add to your bottom line. If you learn this objection, the other thing that I would say to you is what are your thoughts when you hear this? What you, when you hear this is like, oh man, like they're going to work with this person or they're going to work with that. Or are you thinking like, man, this is probably one of the hottest leads I have because they're telling you I am going to do something. I'm just not going to do it with you, which you know they're going to do something. They're just not doing it with you. So if you learn how to handle this objection and if you learn how to convert some of these without changing anything else that you're doing to prospecting, you can grow your business by three, five, 10, 15 different deals. The moment I learned this one, this objection, and the moment I learned I need to think about it at the listing presentation, my deal shot up like crazy. Yeah. I, I actually remember that. Yeah. I remember when that happened. You like, you, you, go ahead, go ahead. For a full year, all I worked was on these two objection handlers because I knew that if I master these two, boom, because those were the ones that I was getting stuck on the most. So what I want you guys to think about is as you're prospecting, how many times is this com- coming up and are you handling it the way that you want to handle it as well too? But Aaron remembers when this happened. I called them up. I was like, yo. He called me up on yo. the spot. He's like, yeah, it's, it's what it was. He's like, yo. Or he's like, bro. And I'm like, what happened, dude? He's like, dude, they told me they had another agent. I handled it. It happened. Both happened at the same time because they told him he had another agent. He got past it. He went on the appointment the same day. They told him they wanted to think about it. He handled that and he closed and he got a listing room assigned. He was like, this shit is magic. And I'm like, it's not really magic, dude. You just now um, have kind of unlocked through practice the next level. It's like a video game. He unlocked the next level and his deals did shoot up through the roof. He used to have to go on appointments like two times in order to get them. That didn't happen anymore. And his listing kind of ratio went up dramatically. So yeah, like what you were saying made me think about it is like I did, I went through like three different tracks. So one was like kind of a little bit of a doubt track. Like, do you think it makes sense before you get caught up in a multi-month contract that could cost you a lot of money? to get more than one opinion, just to make sure you're making the best choice. And he was like, nah, I'm good. Then it was like the money track. Well, you know, we've helped a lot of families like actually get substantially more money, right? Uh, because of the you know approach that we utilize. Is that something that you're interested in? He was like, nah, the other guy said I would do that too. So then the third track was what if we could come up with a win-win proposition? Because I realized he wasn't moving away from the friend. You see, so what Jose's saying is is one hundred percent accurate. I have to keep, I have to have layers, as he described it, right? Like multiple different tracks that I can take, and that's exactly what's happening. It's like there's a door. Somebody inside of it is like, I'm gonna sell my house, and I'm trying to find a way in the door. Is it through the window? <laughs> is it through the front door? Right? Is it through the back door? Like, how am I gonna just get in there just to have a conversation with them? 
And what, what I try to do with the way that I handle it too, is I try to make it very universal in a sense where it almost works in every scenario. So I'm going to break down the way that I handled it and I'm going to go a couple different layers deeper as well too. So the first way that I handle it is I'm not sure if you're open to this. Here's what most sellers are doing. Most sellers are typically taking the time to interview a couple different agents just to get a couple different opinions about price, commission, and marketing. Is that something that you're open to? At that point, they're either going to say, yes, I'm open to it, or they're going to say no. And then similar to Aaron, I go into the money right after that because it's funny. And the reason, the way I came up with the money, and this is kind of like a funny uh, story is, have you guys ever seen those gold digger pranks? Like where a guy dresses up as a bum um, and t- tells a girl, hey, can I take you on a date? The girl rejects him. And all of a sudden, the 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 guy comes back in a Ferrari and that same girl wants to go on a date with him. She's like, oh, my God, like, is this your car? I didn't know that this was your car. Like, let's go out. Let's hang out. Like, all of a sudden, I'm not busy. All of a sudden, I don't have a boyfriend. And the guy just looks at him like, what just happened? And the reality is you dangled a carrot in their eyes and you're also testing their loyalty. So like in that scenario of the gold digger prank, they're like, I have a boyfriend. You dangle the Ferrari and they're like, uh, I don't have a boyfriend anymore. So you're like really like tested their loyalty. So the next thing I'm doing is I'm testing their loyalty. And the way I'm testing their loyalty is I'm telling them, look, um, a lot of the properties that I list for sale. So the reason I'm asking is a lot of the properties that I list for sale, I actually sell them substantially above the asking price. And then I give them a couple of examples. Like, look, we just listed this property at this price. We sold it at that price. We listed this other property at this price. We sold it at that price. That's X amount of dollars above the asking price. Um, I Now, in some cases, I'll even say something along like, look, my highest negotiation above the asking price last year was 220. The year before that was 290. 290,000. Let me ask you this. If I can do something similar for you where I help you get an extra 10, 20, $30,000 above the asking price, is that something that you'd be open to? And then at that point, they're either going to say, wow, that would be really helpful for me. Yes, I'm open to interviewing you or they're going to reject you again. And this is like another layer. But what I hit Aaron with was, well, um, like my friend said that they can do the same thing. And then at that point, the way that I handle that before I go into the fourth layer is I would say, so it sounds like, which Aaron did the same thing. It sounds like you're kind of thinking like whoever you list with, you're going to get the same exact result. It, yeah, that's, that's what true. It I did do like. that. That's exactly you what did I do did. that. Yeah. And that's yeah. the exactly the same thing that I do. But then I'll say something like, are you familiar with something called the list to sales price ratio? Mm-hmm. Uh, no, I'm not familiar with the list of sales price ratio. Well, a list of sales price ratio tells you what an agent lists as a property for and what it actually sells for. The average in our market, and it could be different for your market, let's say it's 99%. The average in our market is 99%, meaning if an agent lists as a property at a million dollars, he's generally getting uh, $990,000. My average list to sales price ratio, and obviously you have to check your average list of sales price ratio, is let's say 102%. What that means is that when I normally list a property at a million dollars, I sell them for a a million twenty. That's thirty thousand dollars above the average agent on average. Let me ask you this. If I can do something similar for you or I'll say something along the lines. Well, if that were true, where all agents, uh, if that was true, where you say that regardless of who you list with, you're going to get the same exact result. Wouldn't that mean that every single agent has the same exact list to sales price ratio? Right. Well, yeah, it would. So here's what I would propose. I'm not asking for any sort of commitment from you. I'm not asking for you to sign a contract with me. All I'm asking for is an opportunity to interview. You can take the information that I give you. You can compare it to the other agent that I, that you're interviewing. Well, here's worst case scenario. You can take the information that I give you. You can share it with your friend and you can end up working with them. But at least this way, Aaron, you've interviewed one of the top agents in town and you can be certain that from a business perspective, you're making the best decision. Do you really have anything to lose by interviewing somebody that sold $80 million worth of real estate in the last 12 months? Yeah, it's difficult to say no to that, right? And I think another way that you could go down that track too, that's one way. Another way is you could say like, yeah, you know, I'm aware that that's operating under the assumption that all agents do the same thing. And if they all did the same thing, they would all get the same results. And so one of the things that, and one of the things that we find that our clients really appreciate, particularly when they're in that kind of uh, mode of making a decision of who they're going to entrust with their largest asset, which for most people it is, is there's something called a real estate report card. 
where in the multiple listing service, everybody has an MLS number. It's kind of like a social security number. And you can put that in and actually track and see the units, how many homes they sell, what the list to sales price ratio is, meaning what they've listed it for and what they actually end up getting, how many of their listings expire unsold. I'm curious, would that be the type of information that you would want to see in making a decision to hire somebody to handle your most valuable asset? And then shh, and he'd be like, whoa, because more likely than not, they haven't done any of that, like at all. It's just like, I know this person and I like them. And they're like, well, yeah, I mean, I guess I could see what you're saying. It's like, yeah. And, you know, really just by you saying that demonstrates that we, we should probably get together and discuss the options. May I make a suggestion and going to a closing sequence? Yeah. And then Agreed. the final one, that fourth one is like, we've exhausted those. Boom, boom, boom. Then it's like, what if we could create a win-win situation? And the reason why that one's so critical, because most agents aren't willing to do it. They have this like all or nothing mentality, right? I've literally in my career, 2000 properties sold, 80% listing sold. Probably like 10 of them have been that where we just, we just offered a referral fee to the other party. And because of that, we ended up getting listing and selling the property. The other person didn't have to do anything. So we created a win-win. I'm, I'm thinking of one client in specifically, his name is Alan. It was a, uh, a, a cold call, right? It expired. He's like, I think I'm going to just relist with this uh, other agent. And I said, well, you know, I have to imagine that you felt pretty confident that the last agent would have sold it for you. Otherwise you wouldn't have hired them. Correct. He's like, yeah. And I'm like, unfortunately that didn't happen. So prior to getting caught up in another multi-month contract, that could cost you more time and money. Do you think it makes sense to just get a second opinion this time, just to make sure you're making the best choice? And he was like, well, you know, she's a friend and that, 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 and she manages the property. So she's a property manager who has a license. So I'm like, yeah, I get that. And, and I can understand how, why you'd want to preserve that relationship. I'm wondering what if we could come up with a win-win proposition in which you could preserve that relationship. She would participate in the transaction and you get the, the service that you deserve. So that way you can get it done. He's like, well, what do you mean? I'm like, well, you know what we've done in these situations quite frequently, uh, cause it's not uncommon. Everybody has a real estate license is we just offer them a referral fee. So meaning that they get to participate in the listing side commission. They don't have to do anything. So they're getting some compensation, which allows you to preserve that relationship. You get awesome service and you actually get it sold this time. Right. So essentially it's a win-win. Is that something you'd be open to? He said, yes, Jose, we listed that property, sold it. And then behind that was five more transactions over time. All because I was able to get past, we have another agent. Well, I'll tell you this. I could think of a client. Her name is Marilena. She had done three transactions with the same agent. And she told me, I've already got another agent. I handled it, met with her. She's like, I'm not signing anything. Like, uh, like, uh, like, I'm open to hearing what you have to say, but I'm good. I'm 99% confident that I'm going to work with my friend. I go there, give her a strong listing presentation. She works with me. I've done probably five or six transactions with her. So what a lot of you guys don't realize is that not only by not knowing how to handle this objection at times, you're missing on, out on one deal. You're missing out on that one deal. And the babies that that one deal produces, yes. the five or six other paychecks. So that ability to convert that one, like we just listed a property. The neighbor calls me, hey, I want to sell that property. Had I not listed that property, I'd be leaving 20 some thousand dollars on the line because I didn't know how to handle that same objection. So you're actually leaving a lot more money than just that one transaction on the table by not knowing how to handle this objection, which Agreed. in my opinion, this is one of probably – the most important objections that you need to learn, because at least in California, this is the objection that you're going to get most frequently. And if you learn how to handle it, you're going to win more times than not, basically. Now, here's one thing that I did want to make. One of my favorite things is a lot of people think that like they're like, well, I, I, I don't I, I don't want to meet with you because I feel bad for my friend or yeah. I don't want to meet with you because I don't want to like um like, uh, like I'm a man of my word and here's what I do to take pressure off. So in this situation, you have to take pressure off. And the way I do it is I look, I'm not asking for any sort of commitment from you, Aaron. Yeah. I'm not even asking for you to sign a listing agreement. All I'm asking for is just an opportunity to interview. You can take the information that I give you and you could even share it with your friend. That's like worst case scenario. Here is worst case scenario, Aaron. worst case scenario. At the end of our meeting, you say, I like what you have to offer. I'm still going to work with my friend, but at least this way, for whatever reason, something doesn't work out with your friend, you've got a backup plan. And if something doesn't work out, you've got somebody that you can work with. Basically, uh, you got somebody that you can work with basically after that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that and works I, so well because you're yeah. not 
telling them sign a contract right now. You're not telling them like, hey, ch- you're not cheating on your friend by meeting with me. All you're doing is interviewing me. That's all you're doing. Yeah, it's, it's what they think. That's what it feels like to them. And the way that I did that, if you notice, is I was like, look, Jose, what I'm aware of is you don't owe me anything. I'm just a voice over the phone. I'm also where you don't owe your friend anything. Like what this is really about is about you and your family making the best decision from a business perspective in terms of getting the most and doing it quickly and efficiently and getting you to your next destination in a timely manner. So I'm curious and then going, right? So it's like, it's, it's decoupling that because people feel a a strong sense of obligation. But by me leading with myself, I'm like, look, dude, you don't owe me anything. There's zero obligation here. You know, right now, this is for informational purposes only. Obviously, if you did decide to hire me, we'd love to have the opportunity in your business. My intention at this moment is just to equip you with everything that you need so you can make the decision that you feel is best for you and your family. I mean, does that sound reasonable? And it's hard to be like, no, that's not reasonable. You know what I mean? And and here's my thought. My thought is I just want to get my foot in the door to be interviewed mm-hmm. because if I get my foot in the door, I know that my listing presentation is so strong that it's going to be very hard for them not to want to work with us because of all of the services that we offer and how we can help make their life simpler. So the reality is you don't need any sort of commitment from the phone. You don't need them to say, Hey, I'm going to work with you. They can say, Jose, 99% chance. I'm not going to work with you. That's okay. If you've got a strong listing presentation and you're good at demonstrating how your services could actually help make this a much easier, better faster process and how they can get better results, it's okay. And your chances of working increase. Now, here's one thing that I don't feel I handled correctly when uh, at the beginning, when you asked me like, well, Jose, what are you going to do differently? Um, I would probably handle it a couple different ways. One is I would actually give them an example of things that I would do differently. That's one way. So I might say, well, look, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but we actually offer like complimentary home staging. What that means is that we have an in-house interior design gal that will go to the house and literally either work with your furniture to make everything look nicer, or we have the ability to stage the whole property for free, and it's all complimentary. By using staging, we're finding that our properties are typically selling faster and for more money. Another thing that we offer is if you need any help boxing up any items, we can help you box up any items. If you need any help donating any items, we can help you take any items to donation companies. If you need any help throwing any items away, we can help you with that. So there's a lot of things, Aaron, that we offer that are completely different from the traditional agent. Uh, Once again, I'm not asking for any sort of commitment from you. I'm not asking for you to sign a contract with me. All I'm asking for is an opportunity to interview. Once we meet, you can decide, okay, do I want to continue working with the friend that I have or do I want to go in a different direction? That's one of the ways. The other way that I would handle that is, and this is a good friend, shout out to Matt Green. He said, well, it's not really what I would do differently. It's more what I would do better. So there's only a certain number of things that an agent can do to obviously help your home. I mean, a lot of them are going to offer professional photography. A lot of them are going to offer you this, this, and that. It's not what I'm going to do differently. It's what I'm going to do better. So here's what I can say. I'm going to get you the best this. I'm going to get you the best that, this and that. What's a good day for us to get together? But I like that. It's like, look, it's not really what I'm going to do differently. It's what I'm going to do better to help you get top dollar for your property. Very simple. Yeah, simple, straightforward. and 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 it clearly moves them off of like, you have to like demonstrate to them this whole like, hey, here's all the things I'm going to do differently. You know what I'm saying? And what what just came up for me as we're kind of having this conversation, it's like, yeah, it's not what I'm going to do better. Excuse me. It's not what, what I'm going to do different. It's just what I'm going to do better. And, you know, the proof is in the proof is in the progress. We've had the great fortune of helping X amount of families so far this year uh, accomplish their goals and objectives. And I feel supremely confident provided the opportunity we could do the same for you. So I'm looking here at my schedule. If we were to connect under normal conditions, would you be available in the evenings or afternoons? You go in that closing sequence. And then the other way that you can handle that, which I know Jose was going to tell you, but like I'm speaking, so I'll just tell you, is um, is you could, they're like, well, can't you just like tell me over the phone? It's like, look, I could tell you. At the same time, I wouldn't be able to show you and prove to you, right, exactly what we've done to help X amount of families this year or to get 102% of the list price, right? And that, and it's very difficult for me to get a, the clearest picture possible and give you the precise plan that would help you and your family accomplish that without physically seeing the property. So if we were to connect, 
right? Under normal conditions, would you be available in the evenings or the afternoons? I'm using the word if there because if creates possibility. It doesn't mean we're doing it, but it's like if we were to connect. And then Jose's brain goes like, well, I mean, if we were to meet, it would probably be this day. You're like, okay, great. And then you can, can, can continue to proceed from there. Here's another thing that you made me think of. And it's funny. I love this because obviously like we bounce off each other and it kind of like you say some things that sparks up thoughts. Like when Matt said, it's not what I'm going to do differently. It's more or less what I'm going to do better. Uh, Aaron, I don't want to brag to you in any way, shape or form, but in the last 12 months, we've had the wonderful fortune of selling $80 million worth of real estate. All that means to you is that if you're looking for somebody with experience and you're looking for somebody to help you get top dollar, obviously we've got the resources and the plan to help you do that. What's a good day for us to get together? Yeah. And what I really enjoy about that is that most people, when they talk about themselves, they don't, they don't like humble bring it back to the client. Well, and they don't humble brag and they don't put it in the context of the client. So it's like, you know, my intention in sharing with you what I'm about to share with you is not to brag or boast. It's just to demonstrate to you that we've helped lots of families just like you. You know, in the last 12 months, we've helped X amount of, you know, homeowners get the most and do it quickly and efficiently. So it's not a question to me of if we can help. We definitely can. It's really just a question of me trying to figure out what's going on with your situation, what you're looking to accomplish and why. So that way together we can come up with a plan to help you to get what you want, the time you want. Does that make sense to you? And they're like, well, yeah, I guess that makes sense. And then you can proceed from there. Yeah. And the main thing is in this video, just to clarify, we are not suggesting that obviously you reach out to people that have already signed a listing agreement in any way, shape or form. This is not about that. We're not suggesting that you reach out to people that are under contract with another agent. Not about that. This video, just to clarify for everybody, is for people that have not signed a listing agreement, are not contractually under any obligation with any real estate broker, because at that point, they're fair game. You know, they're fair game. And at that point, you can reach out to them and interview for the job. And then at the end of the day, they'll make the best decision for them. Yeah. And that brings up a really uh, just popped into my brain as you were saying that. So let's say they say to you, like, we already have an agent. You're like, okay, excellent. And just so I'm clear, have you already authorized a listing agreement? Quiet. And to Jose's point, if they say no, it's, it's open season. It's, it's, it's free game. And again, we, we're going to play ethically. We're going to play fairly. We're not going to shit on, you know, the other agent. Um, if they do say no, then you can still proceed. If they're like, yeah, and you're like, okay, great. So you already signed an agreement. And just so I'm clear, because hopefully, you know, in the in the term of the agreement, the property is going to sell. Did you do like a short term agreement or a month to month one where like they gave you the ability to cancel at no charge or are you locked in for a specific amount of time? And what I'm doing there is also placing a little bit of doubt because they're like, oh shit, I didn't know I could do that, right? <laughs> Um, but they're like, no, we did like a, you know, a three month agreement. Okay. And I have to imagine that at the culmination of three months, if it doesn't sell, you'll probably be looking for a fresh approach. Is that safe to say? And they're like, yeah. Okay, good. So what I'll do is I'll put in my calendar. I'll circle back with you. You know, obviously if we have a buyer, we'll bring them by. I'll circle back with you, you know, in 90 days, hopefully, you know, it won't be necessary because you'll have the property sold and closed. But if for some reason it's not, then we can reconnect then and see if we could be of assistance. Does that sound fair? And they're like, yeah, that's great. And then you move on. And then here's the other thing that I would say to that as well, too. Like, you're going to get a different variation of things. Like, so a lot of people get confused because they're like, oh, well, I already have an agent that I'm going to work with. Or I already have a a person that sells homes in my neighborhood that I'm going to work with. Or they're going to say, I already have a friend. Or they're going to say, my cousin's actually a real estate agent. Or they might even say, I'm a real estate agent as well, too. I can't tell you how many real estate agents homes I've listed before as well, too. Um, regardless of what they say, it all kind of comes down to the same objection. The same objection is I've already got another agent yeah. basically. And, and, or I, and to your point, like, like people that are an agent and I've listed so many of their homes. Cause they're like, yeah, we're an agent. It's like, okay, excellent. And then just so I'm clear is your intention to try to facilitate this sale on your own? Cause I know you're an agent in another state. Was your intention to try to facilitate on your own or would you be open to receiving a referral fee and just have a local professional help? And then be quiet. And they're like, no, nah, dude, we're probably just going to hire an agent and take a referral. He's like, okay, great. And then you can proceed from there. But sometimes when people hear that, they just like shut down. So the main point that I want everybody to take away from this, guys, is there's a lot more opportunities that you just aren't seeing. And because of a lack of skill, you're missing out on them. 
So what Jose said is absolutely accurate where like, let's say you can handle this particular objection and you get better and you get your foot in the door. You're not going to list all of them, but let's say you list, I don't know, 10 of them more in a year. Well, not only do you get those 10 transactions, you get neighbors calling you because of the yard signs. You get buyers calling you from the yard signs. You get future business from those past clients because they're in your database. Like literally each one of these could be worth 50 to $100,000 over time. So that's why making the investment of stacking time on skills is so incredibly valuable. Both me and Jose did not make a lot of money our first calendar years. I made 13,000 bucks selling real estate. I had zero skills. I would work really hard, but I just didn't, I, I didn't know what to say or how to say it. And then over time acquiring those skills, we ended up getting a completely different result. And the same is true for Jose. So if you like this video, be sure to watch the next one. Jose, we just want a cash offer. We do not want to list the property. We don't want anybody to walk through our home. Yeah, happy to give you a cash offer. I have no problem whatsoever with that.